a little bit about yeah. myself. Well, um, how many of you are Princess Margaret patients? Me too. I have actually been coming to Princess Margaret Hospitals for 43 years, if you would believe that. Um, almost 44. I was uh, actually diagnosed with neuroblastoma um, in 1971. So, and that was way back when uh, Princess Margaret actually had a pediatric ward. So, um, and then I got moved over to Sick Kids. So I spent lots of my life there. But um, neuroblastoma is a uh, cancer of the nervous system and quite a rare one. And nobody quite knows why I survived, but I did. And uh, so I, I believe my mission is to um, tell everybody how to eat eat healthy and in, enjoy life through food, um, because I certainly do. I got into doing, you know, cooking and nutrition. My mom's a fabulous cook. Whenever we came down for appointments, we'd go out for lunch somewhere. That was sort of one of my treats, um, because I, I hated missing school. And um, it was really dreadful when I had to miss school. So I would get bribed with going to a good <laughs> restaurant and, uh, and a hospital visit on the way. So. Um, one of the things, uh, also from my treatments, I had sort of weird digestive issues. And in high school, I just kind of had to start experimenting of what I could eat and what, you know, I didn't feel sick and what didn't upset me. And so I started kind of inventing things. And at one point, I was going to be a pharmacist, and then I was going to be a lawyer. And then I was like, why don't I go into, you know, recipe development? Because th this is what I do anyway. So I took a Bachelor of Science in Foods and Nutrition at Western. And uh, when I was doing that, no offense. I didn't want to be a dietitian. <laughs> um, I didn't want to spend any more time in hospitals, as you can imagine. And so I went the chef route, so I did some chef training, and then I decided I didn't want to work in a big hotel because all you do is cut tomatoes if you're on the tomato <laughs> station. You cut tomatoes for eight hours. So I got into recipe development, and my first job was really cool. It was in the Canadian Living Magazine test kitchen. So that's where I learned about recipe development and writing. And then I've been freelance for 16 years now. And I've written six cookbooks. Takes me a minute there. Six cookbooks. And so some of the recipes um, we're doing today are from the cookbooks. And we have one of my cookbooks as a, as a valuable prize. Ooh. So um, we will have a skill testing question at pay the attention, end. So pay, pay attention. attention. I'll come up with a skill testing question. Content alert. Yeah, so, and now I live actually north of Peterborough, so I've come into the city for the day, and I live north of Peterborough in Buckhorn, and my husband and I also have a cafe in Lakefield, Ontario, so um, it's called Nutshell Next Door, and so in between writing and editing and working at the cafe, and uh, yeah, I, I have lots of fun with food. So the mixed grain salad, beet and mixed grain salad, does everybody like beets? I love, oh good, I don't Liars. have to convert anybody. <laughs> um, beets are awesome because I think they have so much flavor, you can cook them ahead, you can keep them a few days, you can even buy pre-cooked, pre-peeled ones now in vacuum packs. And they last so long, so it's like, you know, if you're on your own or you just, today I want a beet, but I don't want to buy a whole bunch of them, the, the ones in the vacuum packs actually last a really long time. Or you can, make, you can cook them and, you know, use them for a whole week. So we've got wonderful, colorful beets. Right now the farmer's markets are starting. I saw the Sick Kits one on Tuesday. And all the farmer's markets, grocery stores are, have all the different color beets. So we've got golden beets. Slice one open. Oh, so candy, we know what this cane. One? candy oh, cane. Candy cane. No, no, candy cane. <laughs> this. Uh, We're gonna have competition. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, candy, candy cane beans, and then your traditional purple beets. Now, one of the things, we're, um, Jeremy wrapped them in foil, so the instructions here, mm -hmm. wrap them in foil and bake them in the oven. Yes. One of the tips is, if you have a yellow one and a purple one, don't put them in the same foil, because otherwise, well, it's kind of cool, you get a tie-dyed yellow one. It'll pick up some of the purple beets. So I do cook them individually, and if you want to boil them in the pan, same thing. Don't boil them all together, otherwise, you won't have golden beets anymore. That's right. Yeah, so no. you want to benefit from all of the beautiful colors, just yeah. in terms of, oh. I'm having trouble. There we go. The like camera's oh, falling. Oh, I, I didn't nice. see the monitor. There we go. Yeah, so it's great to maintain the colors rather than having them kind of bleed together and all become kind of purpley ish beets. And we're using beets today because they're delicious, they're wonderful, and the more variety of colors you choose for your beets, the more variety of antioxidants you're going to be getting. And beets contain an antioxidant called betalane that is very unique to beets and is being studied for its potential in heart health as well as reducing cancer risk. And so to roast the beets, uh, like Jennifer mentioned, usually the way I do it is 375 degrees Fahrenheit, even up to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. 
uh, for about 45 minutes to an hour, depending on the size of the beat. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have the smaller beats, so try to match them up. If you have big beats, put them in one foil package, put the smaller beats <laughs> in another. Organize your beats. They'll, yeah, organize, organize your beats. beats. <laughs> uh, and then, yeah, especially the colors. Like Jennifer mentioned, that, that red beat will bleed everywhere. Um, to peel them, it's pretty easy. These have cooled, so I'm using a, a paring knife. But when they're slightly <laughs> warm, are this is Jeremy's <laughs> paring knife. This is my paring knife. My paring knife is more this size. Yes, yeah, it's a little bit smaller. <laughs> uh, but once they're warm, when they're like still nice and warm, you can actually just rub the skin and, and it'll come right off of the beet. Really. But yeah, and the nice thing about cooking beets this way, you can then use them in a salad like this. You can heat them up and you know have them as a side dish. And if you've cooked them, you've got your oven on anyway, cook a whole bunch of them and then you know eat them over the next five or six days. They, they actually hold really well. And uh, you, know, you can sort of plan ahead and, and minimize your work through the week. Mm -hmm. Is there anything you can recommend, Jen, in terms of not, well, th we have the gloves so you don't stain your hands, but with a cutting board and chopping the red beets? Um, bleach, you know what, bleach um, works on your cutting board, but on your hands I use a lemon. So after I've squeezed out my lemon, I use the rind, because I don't want to use a whole fresh lemon, I squeeze the juice out first. But use the lemon and rub that and hope you don't have little, little cuts. But, yeah. um, <laughs> but rub the lemon on and the lemon will help get the beet stain off. Oh, great. And uh, that's handy. Um, so the grains, we have, you chose like a five grain or a, a blend grain. Yeah, grain. I like to do, um, you could do this with plain brown rice. I, I, does everybody, is everybody brown rice and whole grain converts already? Or are you still on white <laughs> rice? <laughs> okay, we're going to, we're going to convert you over to the whole grain. We right, are, Christy? we're looking for fiber. Because fiber and slows down how, how it gets digested and you, um, everybody needs more fiber in their diet usually. So grains I find are a really nice way to do that. And one of the ways you can sort of mix it in, especially if you're cooking for a family and everyone's like brown rice, but, oh, whole grains. Start with like three quarters white and one quarter brown. And then next time, half white, half brown. Then next time, three quarters brown, quarter white. And by then, you've weaned them off. You can do the same with whole grain pasta. Wean them off slowly. And this one is really nice. It's got millet and barley and wheat and brown rice. Mm -hmm. And this was a president's choice. This was a president's choice. It's yeah. a five. It's a five grain mix. Right. But you know there's all saying. different. You know what? There's all different brands. You can even buy them at bulk stores and stuff. And I really like the different textures. And when mm. you cook it up, it looks really pretty mm. too. And uh, you get different textures from the different grains. So you can find those grain mixes um, at most grocery stores. And uh, you know bulk food stores and health food stores for sure. And it's just a nice way. I do that for summer salads all the time, you know, all summer long. But there's no reason, like say you have quinoa on hand and you want to cook quinoa, just do it with quinoa absolutely. or just brown rice. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You can just really. use one, one grain um, if you like. And even if you wanted to make it with white rice, you could sort of do, you know, mix a little bit in, and uh, and it, it's kind of nice that way. What's convenient, what I did find convenient about this uh, blend is because it's a mix of different grains, usually what they do is they par cook it all to a certain point so that it only takes another 10 minutes to cook. Right. Because a lot of these grains individually, one might take 20 minutes, one might take 40 minutes, um, so this, yeah. this sort of makes it a lot easier. It's already at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, when you're buying the blends. Cook beets with our grain, correct? Should I get on the dressing? Let's, <laughs> let's do the dressing. Well, there's okay. a couple, of, let me, this ingredient, we have some green onion. Yeah. Put that in there, and then for the dressing. Start there. Yeah. So this is like an orange explosion. Yeah, one of the things I love, um, it's, it's funny to say, we always made homemade salad dressings when we were kids, and I, I would get the jar, and it was so much fun because you put like a cup of sugar, and then a whole whack of ketchup, and then <laughs> a bunch of oil, and then you you know a little splash of vinegar. Did anybody else make that dressing? Because that that was like our <laughs> our family standard dressing, and I mean we ate pretty healthy because we were eating homemade. But and then you shake it up and stuff. But nowadays I tone it down a little, and uh, I love using fresh orange in my dressings. Um, adds lots of flavor. You don't have to add a lot of salt, and you don't have to add a lot of oil because it's not as um, tart as a vinegar mm -hmm. and then so it won't zest at all because that's boring um, but this is a really great way to get 
Can you smell it? Is that, we'll smell them. It'll come. It'll, Say, come. it'll come. It's such a beautiful and, aroma. And you know what? If you're having guests and you're not sure, you know, how fresh your house smells or whatever, just, just do a floor. little zesting and they'll be like, oh, what have you been cooking? It's great. So <laughs> lemon, it, um, a little dab right. behind your ears. <laughs> and, um, limes, I use a lot. I use oranges a lot. Lemons, same thing. Grapefruit. Right. I the did the oil. Juice. So I put oil, some olive oil in here. We've got orange juice the honey, the Dijon, and the orange zest. And that's as simple as it is to make your own dressing. I do it in a jar like this, keep it in the refrigerator, and uh, I just always have homemade dressing on hand. And my husband likes bottle dressing and I can't stand it. <laughs> and uh, don't tell anybody else though, because he's a chef. But he, he says it's just convenience when he needs a salad. I always have a jar or two of different homemade dressings and it's really great to toss it with your grains and your beets and that will all soak in. You can make this a few hours ahead. I would maybe add the onions just before you are serving it so that they don't kind of overtake and uh, we'll toss that together. Oh, see, they keep Smells cleaning up after and it me. It looks beautiful. It looks beautiful. All that color. We're gonna gorgeous. Add, we're going to add a few orange segments right. as well. Right. That yep. looks great. Might as well use the whole orange or as much of it as we can. So <laughs> there's our first recipe. Beautiful, very colorful, delicious. You'll, you'll try it later. Uh, so thank you for our first recipe, salad. The end.